Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Welcome, everybody, to our new podcast series, Data Movers. I'm your host, Jamie Scott Akataya, CEO and founder of JSA, along with my fabulous co host, Mr. Evan Christel, top P2B social influencer. Hey, Evan. Hey, Jamie. Hey, everyone. And thanks to, uh, to you for putting on another episode of Data Movers, where we sit down with the most influential folks in today's leading telecom and data center world, supporting the infrastructure requirements of this new normal. But first, Jamie, did you survive the Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, Insta apocalypse? Yeah, I mean, Facebook went down, but sadly, I have an oil spill out my window to watch going uh, across. Uh, So I guess, uh, I guess my reality shifted to actual reality instead of my, my, my virtual self on Facebook. But yeah, oh my goodness, what a week, huh? Yeah, it's always something. I'm not sure if the real news of the oil spill or the virtual news of Facebook is more dramatic, but it just goes to show you how resilience is is now the uh, key theme for 2021. Um, you know, don't put your eggs in one basket, whether it's a uh, backup system on an oil tanker or oil rig or, you know, a data center. <laughs> Diversity and having a plan B and uh, having backups and resilience, I think in all aspects of your business and life have kind of come to the fore, huh? Yeah, and how precious this world is, you know, uh, human stupidity needs to (laughs) somehow read itself and recognize how precious this earth is and and really for us to keep that um, first and foremost and and, uh, and, and double, double check protect ourselves, protect our earth, um, oh, crazy times. So It is indeed, but let's get back to some more sanity with a really interesting guest, how about that? Yes, uh, so um, as you know, here at Data Movers, we really like to dive in to the background stories, the career highs and lows, unique perspectives um, of these leaders on our industry, the future of our industry. And I'm so excited to introduce our guest today, Christopher Lodge, of course, the United Fiber and Data's COO and interim CEO. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. And I'm I'm excited as well. And I'm here on your website at ufd.com. And it's amazing your accomplishments here, 400,000 miles of fiber, 375 plus buildings on net. Isn't it time now just to relax and maybe go kick it on the beach or do you have some more plans here to uh, surprise us with? I wish that was the case, but you know how this industry works. If you're not moving forward, yeah, you're falling behind. Yeah, so tell us about some of the announcements that you've just made around you know, your continued uh, uh, network infrastructure rollout. Yeah, so uh, we just did some public announcements for some international clients, uh, namely uh, Deutsche Telekom and Eastlink Communications out of Canada uh, that, uh, you know, signed up on the UFD route uh, that we have in- we installed a few years back. And uh, we're real excited to have them as customers and solving some of their infrastructure needs. Fantastic. And I, you know, I love, I love your long haul fiber network. Very um uh, very uh, much a path that uh, is required, uh, so necessary, the bandwidth uh, consumption just in that I-95 corridor from New York City to Ashburn, incredible. But you guys uh, offer diversity uh, and, and uh, you know, along with this incredible uh, uh, capacity need, you, you're also uh, giving us a little more of a, a diverse route. So it's uh, adding some some love and this congestion, if you will. That, that it is, uh, as you were talking in the beginning about resiliency and you know that diversity, that was the idea and the concept behind it uh, for this corridor. Uh, and you know, it took a while, uh, you know, constructing um, you know the route miles, if you will, to connect those two major markets and you know all the data centers that exist in them. And 
but once we got it going, and as you see, you know, in the latest press releases, it, it, it's really caught on. Um, you know, the, the driving factors, obviously, is the diversity itself, just physically diverse um, in, in the corridor, but also the, we did something I think that's unique when you build something that long, is we use the same cable manufacturer, and we tried to stick to some tight standards. So when it did get eventually get turned up, we're seeing latency that's as good or better as the shorter main corridor, but giving that diversity. I love that. And, and I noticed when I was introducing you, you have a new title now. I mean, I, I know, I've known Chris for a while and, and he's been COO, but now interim CEO. What is, what's about, what's that new leadership role like? Uh, and how does that- well, yeah, as you you know, uh, you know Jamie. Unfortunately, um, the role or the title, you know, kind of came about in uh, the passing of uh, our uh, former uh, CEO Felipe Alvarez, um, who was very well known in the industry and uh, sadly, sadly missed. Um, so I, you know, kind of stepped up, I guess you would say, uh, and, you know, trying to continue to drive the vision and the uh, direction of UFD forward in, uh, in the midst of, you know, the, the COVID lockdown and things like that it hasn't been easy, uh, but it, uh, definitely challenging and, uh, but I'm up for the task. Big shoes to fill for sure. Uh, Felipe, uh, a longtime friend, uh, and, and of the industry, uh, amazing, uh, amazing legacy he leaves, but, um, my goodness, have you been stepping up? Uh, you're really driving innovation growth over at UFD. Uh, and then I know, um, I know that's your next question, so I don't want to step on it. <laughs> well, I was, yeah, I was curious to see that because you have a lot of news at UFD, Deutsche Telekom's global carrier group out of Germany selected UFD for optical wavelength services in the US just in time for Oktoberfest, right? I mean, so there's going to be a big, uh, beer beer hall festival party, I, I guess, for, with you guys. But what it all here says, what was it about your you know long haul fiber network that's so differentiated and so different and, and innovative that Deutsche Telekom, you know, a very storied company, selected you to partner with? Uh, again, as I previously said, I, uh, you know, the the route has a ton to do with it. Uh, again, being diverse, we don't touch any of the common points. Uh, you know, when you're heading from the northern New Jersey, you know, New York City market down to Ashburn, we don't go through Philly and Wilmington and Baltimore, uh, you know, or downtown uh, DC to get to, uh, you know, that data center, uh, you know, capital of Ashburn. Uh, you know, between that and the, the, uh, the newness, if you will, of the fiber um, and, and the latency that we're seeing. Uh, we have, you know, fiber that's uh, been up and running for two years now uh, on an optical network that's uh, less than a year old uh, in, in terms of turning it up. So all brand new equipment, brand new fiber. Uh, and it really allowed us to see, uh, as I said, a latency that is on par and in some cases better than our competitors on a route that is much longer because you know you come in a couple hundred miles of that corridor by nature you're going to be you know longer we call it the crescent moon that connects you know new york and new jersey down to ashburn away from the corridor so uh you know that latency uh i think really uh you know sparked uh you know people's uh drive um you know with the diversity so i, I put them hand in hand yeah, yeah. those are definitely uh uh, key value points, key selling points. Um, and, you know, as, as you are such a, a thought leader, a longtime thought leader in our industry, Chris, can you tell us what do you see as the next big shift in the industry? I don't know if it's a shift as much as, I mean, for me, I see, and I call it mobility, um, you know, whether that be satellite uh, type connectivity. I mean, obviously we know with the 5G rollout and things like that. Um, I think you throw that in with, you know, this lockdown that we all experienced this past year. And I just see the higher bandwidth being driven to the, the mobility side that you can have bandwidth, whether it be in your car, at your vacation home, a hotel or wherever. I think the days of, and you know, we've seen the industry going this way regardless, but 
you know, it, it's no longer good to have a 10 meg connection. You know, people want uh, at least the hundred uh, on the low side, uh, you know, down to, you know, gig type connectivity, you know, at my house. Um, so I, I see, I, I think there's going to be a lot more driven around that we know with smart cars and, you know, the evolution of, uh, you, you know, the electric vehicles and things like that, that are getting in, um, you know, internet of things. Uh, and how that connects, but uh, I, I just I see us continuing to drive, you know, uh, higher and higher speeds, whether it be to the handheld device or the laptop connected to some type of handheld device. Um, you know, if we would have thought five years ago about doing a Zoom call over a laptop from you know the front seat of your car, which we've all probably done in this time, uh, it they weren't very successful you know, a spotty, the videos chopping and things like that. Now there's a, I mean, there's definitely spots that I have trouble with it, but you'd be surprised what we do in the field now. And, uh, and that's just our side of the business. You look at all the other industries out there. So I, I just see that continuing to grow. Yeah. And I, I noticed in your website here, you actually talk about different industry verticals, whether financial services or healthcare, education, media, carrier services, do you see any of those verticals of particular focus of yours over the next, you know, period of time? Like what's, what, what's exciting for you? Right now we're seeing a huge jump on our side uh, in the financial vertical. Oh, so, really? Uh, yes. Um, you know, now again, UFD is a very young company, new network, uh, you know, ramping up customers. Um but so when you look at where our, you know, talking with people have go has gone and quotes and then and ultimately turning into orders, uh, the financial market for us the past six months has, you know, quadrupled uh, in terms of the, the conversations and, uh, you know, the orders uh, associated with that. Mm -hmm. It makes sense with the latency uh, being a core asset of yours. Um, uh, lowest latency and, uh, and being in the New York Porta Financial Hub. Um, so can we move on over to the topic of Chris, the, the thought leader of our industry, Chris the person. Um, tell, us, tell us more about your professional path. What, what led you here? Uh, uh, like a lot in this industry, I've been doing this for many, many years. I, uh, I'd, I'd have to go back and look, but somewhere between 27 and 29, uh, so we'll call 28 years in the industry. Uh, I started like I think a lot of people. Uh, I'm an engineer by, uh, by background uh, on that side of the, the house, if you will. Uh, I did uh, back in a time where you didn't go to you know, Best Buy uh, and I'll start showing my age by, you know, silo or circuit cities and things like that, um, you know, to buy a computer, you called, you know, a VAR. And uh, before you could go online and order a Dell PC to ship to your house, I started as a, a tech uh, doing installs for the business uh, and primarily the healthcare community. And, uh, you know, where you'd go down and you would install multiple computers on a network and again going to show my age lantastic networks novell oh, you are old wow <laughs> <laughs> um uh you know the very first uh mainframe i worked on required three of us and a specialized uh i call it a, you know a pallet jack to take out the hard drive that was a whopping i think 150 200 meg Wow. You know, li liquid cooled and, uh, you know, it, it, it was quite the uh, undertaking. And now we're walking around with, you know, what, 500 gig uh, iPhones yep. uh, with more computing power, by the way, of the, the old mainframe. Uh, and, and again, uh, healthcare was kind of my, uh, my niche, if you will, or, you know, where all my work was. And like a lot of stuff, you get to a, a crossroad, management, continue. Um, and then started on the infrastructure side uh, from there, doing a lot for the healthcare uh, industry. Uh, the first hospital I went to work for, we installed more uh, fiber within the campus than most carriers had in this region, you know, connecting places. I, I mean, that's the problem with the late 80s and, you know, 90s. Uh, 
and kind of went from there. It, you know, uh, and then ultimately went to the provider or the carrier side, provider side for one of the very first uh, ISP, 100 ISPs in the country uh, back in the late 90s. And through acquisition, uh, I tell people and I joke, I, I think I sat in the same office for 14 years with four names on the door or five uh, over time. Uh, ultimately, uh, uh, prior to coming to UFD was uh, Paytech slash Windstream mm -hmm. uh, through that acquisition. And uh, just I, I kind of grew up with the industry, uh, you know, in, in a time where I call it the dot bomb days of 2000. Uh, where everybody was uh, just going gangbusters and then the market fell out and everything came to a sudden halt. But, uh, and then that's how I got into the data center side. And um, I built and retrofitted uh, data centers for uh, you know, 15 years of my career all over the country. Wow, you've seen it all. So any advice for other leaders in our industry or maybe aspiring leaders, you know, younger folks who want to get into the uh the management uh leadership space uh I, uh I know it sounds a little cliche but uh a lot of drive tenacity and hard work um you know i i know we oh, all that's all there's, that's all come that, on that, that's, uh, that, 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 there's a lot i mean obviously right place right time some you know definitely helps but uh i i think a lot of people today you know and, and i don't want to get you know political but we were so on demand, you know, we want things, you were talking about the, uh, the Facebook outage, we're so used to social media, instant gratification, uh, you know, you don't go from, uh, you, you know, frontline worker to CEO in a two year period or a one year period, it takes time. Uh, you know, again, I started out as a, a PC technician uh, to a network administrator to uh, years and then, you know, director, VP, senior VP, it, it didn't happen overnight. Uh, my family will tell you from my oldest children uh, who were, you know, in their thirties to my youngest, uh, I've missed different things, you know, being out there working and, and whatnot. And uh, you, you can't just take it for granted. You, you, you got to go do, put your time in, at least I, I feel you do. And it also allows you to be uh, well-versed. Um, I've always taken pride that because of the background at an executive level, I can sit in a meeting and talk about the optical gear or the build of the network. But I know, because I know what it's like to be in a bucket or sit in a splice uh, truck or connect the optical gear, you know the questions to ask or challenge your team with. Uh, as opposed to never living and breathing it. Couldn't agree more. So well said. So well said, Chris. Um, we like to end our data movers with this uh, rapid fire fun facts section. So if you will, go ahead and just tell us the very first thing that comes to mind when we ask you a bunch of silly questions. Uh, so here we go. Favorite food that may surprise us. Uh, well, I live in Pennsylvania, so Pennsylvania Dutch. Um, Probably a uh, pork roll, which a lot of people in the country won't know what is, uh, what, what, what it really consists of, but it's- uh, Sounds um, terrible, by the way, it, but that's it, okay. It, it is. It, it probably tastes uh, better than it sounds. Oh, it, it's very good. Uh, anybody that's had it, uh, it's a uh, collage of uh, pork products, but uh, it's, it's very Pennsylvania Dutch. Oh, awesome. I love it. Yeah. And what about what about movies? Uh, if you could have one movie on repeat, what would it be? Oh, that's a real tough. I'm a pretty I'm I'm a movie aficionado, if you will. So that would be tough, depending on my mood. Uh, if I'm in for com, I, you still can't go wrong with things like Caddyshack. Yeah. Um, ah, just, the classic. Well, still to this day makes me laugh. Uh, if I'm in another. Uh, I don't know what it is about the movie, but I can still watch it to this day when I'm clicking through the TV at night and it comes on Gladiator with Russell Crowe. It's just one of those. Uh, and same with The Godfather. Yep. The, first, oh, yeah. the first two. They yeah. could be on any time. And I just saw it last week and I will sit there and watch it again. And my wife will come in and say, you've seen this movie <laughs> 10,000 times, but 
we have the same exact conversation at my house. <laughs> I know I see Gladiator or Godfather and on the menu. I'm like, oh, there it goes by next three hours. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's a, there's a great podcast called The Rewatchables where these folks just dissect some of the classic movies and talk about them in detail. It's fun to listen to. I uh, bet. I love it. I love it. And and then uh, two more, maybe three more questions. Favorite thing to do in the fall, in the autumn? What do you what do you like to do to celebrate the change of season? Uh, we do. Uh, we try to go out. I mean, obviously, this part of the country, the leaves changing are you know the, uh, very dramatic. If you go up into the Poconos. Um, I don't know about favorite. So I like, I'm a boater. So I actually like to take my boat out uh, at that time. Uh, it's cooler, you're in a sweatshirt, things like that. But, uh, you know, the lakes and uh, the Chesapeake Bay are kind of empty, but you look and you can see all that uh, dramatic change up in the distance. And it, it's just, it's relaxing. Awesome. Uh, and for productivity, what, what app do you use mostly on your phone? Or maybe it's Netflix for watching movies I, I don't know what, what do you say uh, the, it's funny because now with all the advancements in the apps you get these reports that tell you how much time you do different things yeah and it's pretty much twitter 100 for me yes I, yeah see for me it's uh i'm sad to say it's about 90 percent of my phone is mail yeah yeah very sad <laughs> <laughs> very sad get away from it no uh, all right, so last question. I promise we, we, won't, uh, we won't burden you with this uh, fun facts section anymore, but one last one. What one word would folks use to describe you? Ah, uh, well, good or bad? Ah, uh, good. Well, <laughs> good. Good. Um, good. No, uh, good, I would say drive. Uh, again, I'm, uh, you know, the, my drive to excel or move forward or get something done. The bad side I hear, all the, I'm impatient. I can admit it. I, I have a very short, you know, patient, uh, you know, uh, fuse, if you will, um, not in a bad way, but it just, I, I do even know, I don't like how social media has portrayed certain things. I like things, you know, instant. <laughs> Uh, like a lot of people. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure your customers are happy about that. And thanks for joining us, Chris. Amazing to hear about UFD's meteoric rise and, you know, the massive plans you have for the Northeast and beyond. So onwards and upwards. Good luck. No, thank you. We have uh, hopefully some uh, new uh, great news that'll come out towards the end of the year, the beginning of the year of some uh, uh, new um routes and connectivity and things like that that uh we'll be very excited to start sharing with people oh, sounds great yeah i like that meteoric vibe that's definitely ufd and thank you chris for being such a, a wonderful guest but also industry thought leader uh, really uh inspiring and guys, if you, you enjoyed uh, today's Data Movers podcast as much as I did, go ahead and check out jsa.net slash podcasts for more episodes of Data Movers as well as any other JSA podcast series we've got. We do drop our Data Movers episodes every other week on Wednesday morning. So go ahead and tune in. Yeah, and forget about Facebook and Instagram. Get on Twitter yeah. and follow us on Jay Scotto and Evan Kerstell. The real, some real fun. So yeah. until then. Until then, as always, guys, stay safe and happy networking.